give to Boris and Corey. They give to Madam Fine. They give to Madam Fine. So thank you, Lord, for this word. Give to Boris and Corey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That I bless. It begins to appreciate it. Mandele Bosan Tanapaya. Rima Masekele Bosan Delapaya. Thank you, that you are blessed. Thank you that you are blessed. You are blessed. Say again. Say after me, I claim it. Say that I claim it. Say again, I take it. Say again, I live in it. I thank God for it. I demonstrate it. Hallelujah. I want to demonstrate it. So just raise your hand if you have your offering. They'll give that to uh, If it's tight, you put it in the group. Put your name there with perfect And then watch it. So that's why it's all good.
It's only in church people believe what is wrong. And when they go outside church, they don't believe those things. So today I want to talk about the revelation of harvesting. The revelation of harvesting or the revelation of reaping. Reaping. How many knows the word reaping? I mean, I've been farmers before. Or you stay at the farm. Yes. You know what it means. You reap. Yes. You know, maize, granites, beans, tomatoes, onions. People reap or they have this. Hallelujah. Now we want to get the revelation of it. Because God inspired me when she told the pastor, I was still not teaching. I told her long time ago. I said, yeah, that's really, 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 this is good. Many people. They don't know how to harvest. Though they are believers, that's why they are suffering. I, I know pastors who love God, but they are like food. Pastors. What does distinguish because of the revelation? The word of God has given me rest. When you know the word of God from your heart, you become at rest. Mm -hmm. I have never struggled like I'm a pastor and I have struggled from the beginning. Because God gave me the revelation early. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I've seen many pastors beg people, please, I've got no right soul. I've got no air time. Please, 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 please. Do I do that to you? And I don't like people give to you. Okay. And I'm a giving pastor myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a deadly one. I'm a deadly giver. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So I want this relation to get into because I want to see your pocket full. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Please listen with your heart. Verses 4 to 5. Proverbs chapter 10. This teaching, even after we are done with the message, really we will sit down with it. And again, listen, go through scriptures alone until you get what I'm saying. Proverbs 10, verses 4 to 5. Let your eyes rest on the man. I'm going to read verses 4 for us. Listen here. He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand. So, this verse is as true as by stripes I am healed. Huh? By stripes you are healed, is it true? Yes. So, this verse also is very true. If you operate with slack hands, so is it true if a person is less than they become poor? Is it true? Oh, yes. 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 So, I wrote here, slackness. Slackness will lead to poverty. A slack, what is a slack hand? Slack hand. A slack hand is a loose hand. Hand that is loose. A slack hand also is a hand that is inactive. Inactive. So, loose hand or inactive hands. Hands that are not in actions. Hallelujah. Also, slack hands are lazy hands. Lazy hands. So, the Bible says, a lazy man shall be poor. So again, God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. When you remove S from slack, you remain with lack. So a slack hand is a hand that lack. Do you see that? So many people most of the time they are blaming Satan for their lack. Are you telling me Satan can only stop you 
Why can't he stop those people who don't even pray? Don't even know the name of Jesus. He can't stop them. But Satan cannot stop believers. Something must be wrong. Hallelujah. Because people, everything, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. Uh -huh. We must not, we must not put the devil's name in our mouth for too long because he's not stopping those people who are not born again. They are doing well. They are achieving. Why, why can he stop you? He can't stop you. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, Satan. 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 It's not my problem. It's not my problem. You can't stay the whole day watching television like this. And expect the, the blessing of the Lord. Uh -huh. Are we being blessed? It is true. Why are people lack? It's because they are slack. They are slack or lazy in their divine moment. Listen, God has divine moment for every child of his. But when our hands become firm, we are going to become people that will never lack. Hallelujah. There is a place in God where you can come. You don't know what lack is all about. That's where I'm going to. Hallelujah. Wow. So again, I'm going there. I'm going there. There's a place where food, not a problem. Fuel, not a problem. School fees, not a problem. Houses, not a problem. Hallelujah. The only problem you have is you are looking for who to feed. That's all the problem you have. Who to bless. Amen. I prophesy that upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That may you get there. Hallelujah. Is that place? <laughs> mm. Now, in the same extent, the other part, let's understand the spoke, the other part says this. But the hand of the diligent makes what? Rich. Ay, ay, ay. It's again rich. rich. So is rich a Bible word? Yes. Is it a God word? Yes. I'm saying, is rich a God word? Diligent in your hands, you'll be rich. Ah, second, so rich. rich. You know, believers are thinking wrong. They think rich is evil. Ah, uh ah. -uh. God is not opposed to you becoming rich. He's opposed to you becoming covetous. That means greedy. Yes. Amen. That's how God is against you. Where you want to make money by all means. There is a way to make money, the God way. Well, I will show you today. God, is not, God made Abraham very, not only rich, very rich. It's again very, very rich. rich. Genesis 13, 2. I'm going to show this. And the Bible says, in silver, in gold, and in cattle, all kind of livestock, not spiritual blessings, material stuff. God gave Abraham that. And also God tells us in Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. That means God does not change. If you make Abraham very rich, he can also make you today very rich. Hallelujah! Amen. But you got to understand the principles that makes God empower you. So, a diligent hand becomes rich. Now look at this. So when your hands are tilted, what, what does that mean? Tilted hand. It means industrious hand. Hands that are industrial. Huh? Industrious hands. It also means the active hand. Now, in the kingdom, it's not just being active, busy. Uh -uh. That's not what I want to be. Just busy doing things, but all is ours. There is, in the kingdom, it's, it's about hearing from God and doing what God is showing. That's what we call diligence in the kingdom. Because people are just busy. I, I, I must do something. It's not, it's not you must do something. You may work hard. 
like an elephant and you eat like an ant. <laughs> so it's not in the hard work. I need to work hard. In fact, I don't like the word hard work. I use the word diligence. Hard work is the case. We are not called for hard work. We are called for diligent work. It's where you are hearing from God and you are doing what God is showing you and God is producing results. Hallelujah! Yeah. That's why in these last days, the time you need is to spend more time with God than with your job. Because one thought from God will shift your career. Hallelujah! Yeah. One thought from God will shift your job. People are struggling. They are busy working like animals. No time with God. So life is tough. I've told myself, if I, if I can spend seven hours with God, I can spend one hour at my job and I'll make it. Amen. Amen. That's what Matthew Luther King said. I'm too busy now that the first thing I do in the morning is to spend the first three hours with God. Why? He must do what God is showing him. Life is just too complicated just to go like this. I must just wake up. People are just doing hard work. And nothing to show at all. Listen. Hands that are diligent are hands that are firm. Are hands that are labor, laborious or laborious. That means they are in the place of work. Paul said by the Holy Ghost, I will quote it for you because of time. Second Thessalonians 3 10, Paul said this by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said this to us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you. If any would not work, neither should he eat. Mm. Say louder. Anyone who does not work, does not, work. Does not deserve to eat. Is that my home? You see some people that they stand in the road. You see a boy with a lot of muscles standing on the road with a cup begging. My friend, I can slap you. And you people are putting money in their paws. Do you know what you are doing? You are promoting laziness. That guy is not deformed. That guy has no problem with him. But the guy is standing on the road. So much muscles. This I'm begging. What? That guy must be slapped. Put your hand, put your hand, put your hand. Yeah. Are we being blessed? Yeah. Verses number 11 says, For we hear that there are some which are walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. They are not busy bodies. These are people that go house to house to spread stories. You see the Lord in the, in the compounds. In the, in, the, in the compound, you see this one goes here and that city and talk, talk, gossip, gossip, and meet back there. And again, go to the next place, gossip, 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 there and eat rice. And go to the next, gossip, 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 and eat bread. What? So that person is that, is being fed through being a busy body. Hallelujah. But in the name of Jesus, you shall never become a busy body. Hallelujah. God is not 
harvest at all because we are not reaping. We are not harvesting at all. If we are, we are not reaping as we ought to. Are you hearing that? But there are four things I want you to note today before I go into my teaching. Four things. Number one, I want to give us full understanding before we can have the revelation of harvest. Number one, you must know this. It is your responsibility to sow the seed. Say louder. It is my responsibility. It is my responsibility. To sow the seed. So the seed. Every farmer, Every they do the sowing. Not so. Have you ever seen a farmer waiting for God to plant for them? No. Every farmer, they keep nice maize, nice, nice beans. You see, I remember when I was doing farming myself. We keep the best seed and put them on top of the roof. And then we wait, we only eat those other bad, bad seeds. Because we are expecting good harvest in those good seeds. Hallelujah. So, you are the one that does the sowing. Say again, I'm the one, I'm the one. who does the sowing. God will never sow for you. You do the sowing. Number one. Number two, you must remember this. The seed you sow, how it grows, you don't know. So again, the seed I sow. The seed I sow. How it grows, I don't know. Did you hear that? So that seed you sow, have you ever seen a farmer who worry about how the bean is going to grow in the soil? No. All the, all the farmer does is this. When they know it's beans time, you see them busy cultivating the ground. You see them busy planting beans. Hallelujah. Amen. And then they go to bed. And after some few days, some few weeks, you see some seedling coming up. After some few months, you see some beans are there. Hallelujah. Amen. But how the bean seed grew into a plant that grows beans, no one knows. Because God has put it in the earth that every seed produced out of the sky. Hallelujah. Don't know that. Number three. You must know this. Reaping is not automatic. I'm responsible for it. Reaping is not automatic. Have you ever seen a farmer when they plant uh, beans and the beans grow the lot? And then you see now the farmer in the bags. Have you ever seen beans itself take itself and put itself back to store it? Or tomatoes themselves, they gather themselves and pack themselves and put themselves in the barns. Have you ever seen that before? No. A farmer plant, how it grows doesn't know, but a farmer must go in the field. Sometimes it's work. Removing the tomatoes. Sometimes even, even the thorns, they are piercing you. You don't care. Mm. It's a tomato you're focusing on. Mm. Sometimes you have to start your tractor, put some fuel there, hallelujah, and then the tractor. Sometimes you must employ people to do the harvest for you. Can you see that? So, harvest is not up to God, it's not automatic. There is a big part of you to play in harvesting. That's how many people have been taught wrong to say, no, once you just sow a seed, you're going to have this. No, 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 no. That's it, happen automatically. You have a part, you have a role to play, but I'll show you that role that you play. I saw, I saw nothing has happened. You still have the harvest. You don't just know how to harvest. Hallelujah. But I declare you're going to harvest in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, I'm going to harvest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I believe this is the time to harvest. Number four, you've got to make sure the ground is good. So, Pastor Stan is a good ground. This church is a good ground. So, your pastor and your church is the first good ground. I'm telling you, if you 
plant seed in the wrong soil, can it grow? No. no. Imagine you go to the seashore where there's sand and you plant beans. Will it grow? No. no. It won't. Because there is no elements that support the growth of that seed. Hallelujah. Amen. So you must make sure that you are sowing in a good ground and out in a good ground where they teach the word of God and true. That's a good ground. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are sowing in a good ground if that pastor is teaching the truth. Amen. That's a good ground. So four things I've told you. You do the sowing. God produces the harvest. You do the harvesting. But also you verify that the ground is right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, write this revelation. We know in the natural, for the seed to grow, there must be water and there must be sunlight. Am I right? Yeah. The rain must drop on the ground, wet the ground, the sun must shine on the ground to enable the, the, the seed to begin to produce. So water is required. Sun is required. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, this is where your tithing plays a role. Now listen carefully. So I, I, I'm not here talking about this, the harvest here because tithing is important. And I want to write this statement. Tithing is not so winning. So when you bring tithe, you are not so winning. It is not your money. God's money, so you don't give what is not yours. Remember, I told you on Sunday that tithe is not giving. It's like a tithe yeah. is not giving. It's like a tithe is not sowing. You are returning what belongs to God. So if all you did was from just tithing, you will still not harvest. So can you somebody say, I've tithed the Lord, nothing is happening. It's not on tithing alone. Imagine if, if the farmer had said, I want to plant, let the rain come, let the sun come. Would that be the harvest? I said, would that be the harvest? That's what the people are doing. They are tithing and the windows are open. What is coming out of that, out of that windows of heaven? The anointing. The blessing, hallelujah. Amen. The power that can multiply the seed. But where is the seed? There's no seed in the ground. But the blessing, the rain and the, the rain and the water, the blessing of the Lord is on, is on the ground. The moment you begin to tithe, the heavens are open. The blessing comes. What is the blessing? The power to cause increase. The power to cause harvest to come. Hallelujah. It's the blessing. So Malachi 3 10 says, Bring all the tithe into the house of the Lord. That they may be want food. Then he says, this, Prove me now and see if I will not open the windows of what? Heaven. And pour you out the blessing. So can you see that? So tithe opens the windows for the blessing. It is the blessing that causes the seed. So tithing, you can tithe and still not harvest. Because it just empowers the seed. It's like a tithing. It's like a tithing. It does not bring the harvest. It empowers my seed. Very, very important. So that's why people are preaching wrong. So can tithing alone bring the harvest? No. no. It opens the windows that bring the blessing and the anointing that brings multiplication and empowerment of the seed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now look at this. So what comes out of the time is the anointing, there's the favor as a sign, which is equal to the blessing. Also, tithing brings protection. 
over your seed. Now remember, when you plant seed, there's no projection in the ground. What happened to your seed? Insect may come. Eat your plant. Eat your seed. So time, that's what it does. It supplies the blessing and supplies the protection. So you've got the blessing that multiplies, and you have the, 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 the protection that protects because the devourer may come, but the tide sets the boundary of protection. So tide sets these things there, but tide does not bring the harvest. Hallelujah! That's why it's important to 
to learn to soar in the life of your pastor. Galatians 6, 6 says, Share in all good things with your instructor. So can you see? The instructor is the one that teaches you. So share. That means every time you place a seed into the hand of your pastor, your pastor is a good club. Hallelujah. Your family members your children and brothers and sisters are also a good ground to succeed. Your children, you can sow your children and God can multiply the blessing back to you. Your children, your family and the brothers and sisters in church are good ground. Are you being blessed? Amen. So, when it comes to your, your, your family, your brothers and sisters in the Lord, you've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't just so many uh -uh. God must lead you. These are people having challenges. When it comes to the issue of sowing, you need to sow at the direction of the Holy Spirit. If you don't sow at the direction of the Holy Ghost, listen, there's something missing there. That's, you can waste your seed. Imagine you're going through a seed somewhere where there's no good ground. You don't germinate. Though there's power for you to go. So, when it comes to brothers and sisters, Nephews, nieces, don't just give them because they are in need. The Holy Ghost must lead you to do so. Hello? As a law. I know some people who have called themselves as the God of their family. You can never be the supplier to everybody. You cannot. That's why. A good person must train people in the family also to know how to receive from God. Hallelujah. Because God never intended for you to become a supplier. Nobody. People just throw it out. 
Now, that's why I'm about to something very powerful. Because people that don't know this, they just saw. Now, my question is this. Is it not the spirit? I have approximately an idea of how much I've sown. I have it. When you pay someone for it by the Holy Ghost, that's a seed. Write it down. Document the seed and the date. You must have a small book where you write every seed. If Holy Ghost needs you to pay to pay school fees for someone, it's a seed. Write it somewhere. Document it at the date. It's a seed. Hallelujah. If the Holy Ghost needs you to pay to your pastor, document it. I saw my pastor today, seed of 50,000, for example, or 5,000. Document it. Every seed you sow, you must document them. Matters for the earth. Why should I document? Because the purpose is huge. How are you going to know how much you have? Yes. You don't know how much you get. Hello? How much how are you going to know how much you can harvest? How much you can claim if you don't know how much you get? So people they don't know. So that will come and ask me, say, hey, don't get it. How much do so? He said, I don't know. So you we'll have a side of <laughs> So if God come and say, uh, check what you saw this year and uh, I want you to multiply tenfold of that. That means times ten percent of that. See how much you can have. Now if you don't know how much you sold, how are you going to multiply to know what God wants to have? Do you see this? Okay. Lift your right hand up. Say, I have, I have an account, account in heaven. Yes. Second, I have, I have an, account an account in heaven. Yes. How many have accounts, banks account? With either Standard Bank or FNB, whichever. How many have? Okay. If you put money in the bank for too long, does it come with interest? Yes. yes. Now, God has got some interest, my friend. Some is 30 times 30%. It's in the Bible. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 8 and Mark 4. It can be 60%. It can be 100. These are some of the percentage the Bible has given us that God cannot plan. It can also be 1,000. In the John, talk about 1,000%. Shall harvest a thousand times more. So now these levels of percentages are based on your faith. 30 fold, that's 30 percent. 60 fold, that's 30 percent. So that's 100 fold, that is 100 percent. That means multiply by 100. You see? So if God came and told you, Pastor Wesley, can you do a five phone of what you saw so far? Just five phone, I want you to harvest it. <coughs> that means take what you saw, multiply by five. Now if you don't know what you saw, how are you going to multiply? So man, God wants to harvest. There's no seed in the ground. Some have been sown. Some have sown. They don't even know how much they've sown. But if you don't know, approximate somewhere. If you know what you've been sowing consistently, you can approximate somewhere and write it down. This is what I've sown so far in the kingdom of God, helping others and so forth. Including what you saw, what you saw when you were young. Just gather together and put on the paper and put approximate sowing what you've done so far. Approximate to somewhere lower and write it down. Philippians chapter 4, 10 then, verse 17. Paul says this about having an, an account. So people think when we give, we waste. No, 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 no. Every time you sow a seed, it goes in the heavenly account. You have an account in heaven. Account. Say again, I have an account. The same way you want to deposit money at the bank. Every time you are sowing a seed, you are depositing 
sowing and giving is depositing him. People they don't know this. Other people they just think, no, it's like, mm, ah, we are going out. No, you are depositing. Whenever the Holy Ghost instructs you to sow a seed, you are depositing. Hallelujah. Into account. Philippians chapter 4, verse 17. Paul mentioned it clearly. Look at this. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound or multiply to your account. It's again my account. Yes. Do you have an account? Yes. I said, Do you have an account? Yes. Do you have an account? Yes. So every time you sow a seed and you give, where is it going? It's in my account. Do people know this? Just people start and give. They think they are wasting. No, every giving you do at the command of the Holy Ghost, and every every giving you do at your faith, because there are two types of giving: your own desire, because you want to grow and to expand, because you see it. Also, the one being led by the Holy Ghost. All those givings and sowing, my friend, they are going into your account. Hallelujah. Amen. Now. If you don't source, if you don't deposit in your account, how much do you have? Zero. How much do you have? Zero. I said, how much do you have? Zero. So what I'm is what? Zero. So God multiplies the seed of the ground. So if you haven't been sowing at all, do you know that if you sow clothes, you will harvest clothes? There was a time I sold shoes. When I went home, shoes. They came, brought to me three pairs of shoes, expensive shoes, four thousand, five thousand. Three pairs of that was I sold seed of shoes. I invested shoes. Now the time I, I, I sold clothes, they brought me pairs of, of clothes. New brand one. Shoes. I'm, I'm telling you, everything you saw, you have a Hallelujah. If you want shoes, you should sew shoes. You don't know these things. If you want clothes, uh, sew clothes. If you want someone to pay rent for you, pay someone rent. It's a seed. Hallelujah. You want someone to pay rent for you one day. Call your neighbor. How much do you pay rent? I pay 3,000. I don't have much. And I'm going to contribute 400 to your rent. What are you doing? You are already sowing a seed. That seed will multiply, hallelujah. And you come back multiply it. I'm telling you, I've never lacked the rent before. You know what? I have sold rent. That was a time I paid, I paid the people for one year rent. One year rent. One year rent. What? I'll just spend and enjoy. So I'll never lack rent. So rent are going to come to be multiplied. When it was beginning here, I paid for rent for one year. One year there. They just said, pick up, pay rent for a while. So how can I like rent? If you lack like friendship, it means you're not so in what? Friendship. Everything of another person. If I gossip, people will gossip you. So check out. If people are gossiping you every time, check out yourself. You must be gossiping somewhere. You must be so in because. Yeah, the Bible says, don't be deceived. You shall reap what you <laughs> Why are people gossiping me? You must ask yourself, am I gossiping somewhere? Because you are sowing that seed. Hello? Yes, hello. You see, people are stingy with their pocket to you. People are stingy to you. Something must be wrong. You must be stingy with your pocket. <laughs> There's one man because he was very stingy. He put two hundred rand here and two hundred rand here. <laughs> During offering time, <laughs> God made him dip into two hundred rand. <laughs> he thought it was twenty, and he he, he did tight like this. <laughs> when he went out, when he took the four hundred rand, the man cried and complained. And you know what happened? The Lord gave him two hundred rand 
at the parking station there. Exactly, it came and picked it. And he repented because he was very stingy. And God got to the rest of the day. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to get that ever that. Now I'm closing with this. That's about to say, How can I know the time to harvest? This is better. Now I'm closing with this. Now listen carefully. After I've so and so and so, how can I know that my time to harvest? Because in the natural, your eyes can tell you things are right. Not so. But in the spirit, how do you know? This is time to harvest now. How can you? You've sown a lot. Now how, you, how are you going to know? Because in the physical, I can see, ah, this is what is right now. I enter there. But in the spirit, how do I know that this is my time for all my seed I've been sowing? This is my time to harvest. How can I tell? Now pay attention, listen carefully. If you begin to see this happening in your life, begin to get to the place where begin to get ready because harvest time has come. Once you get this feeling in your heart, I want to give a verse. It means God is saying, hey, 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 it is ready, it is ready, it is ready. God communicate to you to tell you how much time has come. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 5. 19 to 20. Now, verses 20 is where the answer is. Ecclesiastes 5, 19 to 20. Verses 20 is where the answer is. How can I know when is my harvest? When? How do you show me when? God already spoke, but you didn't pay attention. How can I know? There's what to, to know. There's what to causes you to know. There's a feeling that places in you that makes you to know. Are you there? Mm -hmm. 19 says this. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth him and has given him power to eat them and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. So they are eating good. It's a gift of God. He said, now that eating good is a gift of God. So eating bad is the gift of God. 20 now listen. For he shall not much remember the days of his life. Why? Because God answers him in the joy of his heart. Hey! That's how you know my time has come. The Lord will begin to steer you. Oh, oh, all of a sudden, you're just okay. You begin to feel too much joy every day. Mm, that's the thing. He said to take share. Say, hey, Wesley, get ready. That joy from nowhere, you just begin to feel happy. It's a beam now. God is steered to say, my son, get ready. Your harvest of all your seed and now is ready. He says, God is answers you in the joy of your heart. Mm. So when you begin to find yourself in a place where you're just excited a lot, God is telling you you are in a season of something. Mm. People don't pay attention. Now, in that time where God is communicating to you because the joy in your heart is the voice of God. Now you have to pay attention to listen exactly what is it. Because that joy God's going to get into your heart is a voice. But now you must pay attention to listen to that joy. What is it? Many people are not like that. I don't know. I just feel excited. You do not talk like that. God is communicating your time has come. It's a beam. It's a beam. You're just excited. Shouting a lot, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hey, singing anyhow, what is it? God is saying, hey, watch out, watch out, watch out, hey, watch out. It's a detection. So joy is a detector of the harvest time. Hallelujah. A joy. Hello? It's a detection. 
remember when I told you we are prayer was shifting, I had a detection. We are all of us rejoicing and laughing. Why? We are in the season of something big. It's a detection. That's how you know God. Now pay attention to that joy. Because how does God bring the harvest? Now listen carefully. It's going to come through an instruction. Now, people, people that are waiting up for God to rain money from heaven, that's wrong. Wait for an instruction. In that field of joy, pay attention. There will be an instruction from the Lord. God can tell like this. Look at this. It's can be a very stupid instruction. Follow it stupidly. Because God expects you to trust in life. It could be like this. Go and visit your auntie in East London. That's it. <laughs> what? He knows where he's taking you there. One man of God who knows these things. God, if it began to sense that joy, and the Lord told him, take your private jet, go and fly that country. No meeting, no preaching, no one invited him, just fly there. No, he knows it. Fly, go there. And someone says, hey, he landed. People caught him like normal business, and people sold seed, almost millions of dollars. We came back and sorted out all the bills. But what if we didn't listen to that voice? Go over that country there. No reason. God won't tell the reason why it will be like this, it will be like this, it will be like this. Go and buy that product there. It's up to you now. It's up to you now because that harvest will come at the direction of God. God will tell you where. It will, for example, it will be like this. Throw your net in the deep. That's the next sense. You don't catch fish in the deep. Next week, $3 million, get to the account. Amen. Amen. 
But if you don't know how to listen to God, you will never understand. So, sowing, you must hear from God. Reaping, you must hear from God. Amen. Stand up on your feet. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. Are you blessed? Yes. Are you blessed? Yes. So, make sure that you begin to, if you believe in these things, you will be serious about sowing. The proof that you believe these things, you will be serious. When I found this revelation, I started, I started just by my closet. I went in my closet. Empty my closet, just, just giving. I had made the suits when I came with them from Zambia. I was just giving out suits. Why? I believe in this thing, so I must begin to demonstrate it. Parents, teach your children to sow. Don't want a bike. Don't tell them I can't. I don't have money. Don't talk like that, your child. Tell your child, you want a bike? At the moment, man hasn't yet come to mommy. But listen, in your closet, go and look for a dress you can sort your friend. Go and choose a dress. Choose the best dress. Go and look for a friend you can sort it. You are teaching your children faith. When they go to university, they will never lack. Because yeah. they are going to know how to believe God. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. So you see, the child takes the dress and sold to the friend, and then they hand to the child and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we saw this seed, and we claim the bite for my daughter. In Jesus' name, Satan will rebuke you, angels go, and cause the bite to come. Amen. Or suddenly, just say, God, answer the prayer of the child. Because they believe, no doubt at all. Just as someone says, I don't know. I just said I should send uh, 2,000 for your daughter. I don't know why. Ha ha! Your daughter sowed the seed. The harvest is coming. Hallelujah! Yeah. Jesus. I'm going to buy a bike for child. That's how you do things. Every time if I want something, that's how I do it. I sow my seed and claim my heart. Jesus. Ah, I said, you also must believe something. 